let's face it, we've all used singletons. They're simple, familiar, they just work. And honestly, for most developers working on personal projects or small-scale games, that's totally fine. You might never need anything else. This isn't to say you wouldn't benefit from other approaches, but you can absolutely build and ship great games with singletons as the backbone of your architecture. But when you're working on long-running titles, like mobile or live service games, things change a little. You need something more robust, something that's easier to test, to extend, and to manage as your project evolves. Today, I want to talk about one of those approaches the dependency injection pattern. When I say singleton, this is probably what comes to mind. A mono behavior with a static instance field that we're initializing during an awake method. You probably even have a base class in your toolbox that does just that. And maybe a few extra things, but the core idea is always the same. And here's the problem. In Unity, singletons usually live on game objects. And that means they can be destroyed. Anyone from anywhere can nuke your global state. And no, unfortunately, dependency injection framework doesn't really fix this, but it makes nuking a bit more difficult. In traditional programming, outside Unity that is, the singleton pattern looks a bit more like this. Here, we've got a private constructor and lazy instantiation. This version ensures no one can create a second instance, and once it exists, it sticks around for the lifetime of the application. With that said, even outside Unity, the singleton pattern gets a lot of hate. People call it an anti-pattern, and for good reason. It breaks the single responsibility principle, it hides dependencies, and it makes testing much harder than it needs to be. We'll try to revisit those in future videos, but right now let's focus on a much simpler, more immediate problem. Imagine your game's been live for a while. You've got a solid reward system built as a singleton and it takes care of all the player rewards. Daily bonuses, level up gifts, event prizes, you name it. And different systems across the game call it directly. It works, it's simple, everything's wired up, and then one day some stakeholder says, Let's try something new. What if every time we reward our players, half of them will get bonus coins and the other half will get a random cosmetic item instead? We'll see which one players like more. Sounds like a small experiment, but now you've got a problem. Your entire game assumes there's just one way to hand out rewards. Sometimes it's coins and sometimes it's something else. Now you start stuffing conditionals into your singleton. With more experiments, it grows, it gets messy, and after a while, your nice, clean system is full of ifs branches for every small experiment. Or, as we developers often do, you realize the only real fix is to refactor your entire rewards flow. Now it looks nice again. Until you've got more requests, and more requirements, and more changes you need to implement. All this just to try out a small feature from time to time. So, if relying on singletons can lead to this kind of tight coupling and rigidity, what's the alternative? Well, instead of reaching out to get what we think we need, like calling reward system.instance, we can try passing things in from the outside. That way, each system only works with what it's given, and we control the wiring in one place. By the way, we covered this in the inversion of control video. I'll leave a link in the description. This is called constructor injection. And even though we can't use constructors on mono behaviors, bear with me for a moment. Thanks to the interface, this class no longer calls a specific implementation directly. Instead, it just works with whatever reward system it's given, whether that's one variant or another. From the outside, we're now able to set up everything in one place and supply exactly what each class needs. And the constructor will force us to provide all required dependencies up front, which is great because it makes everything more explicit and predictable. Now you might be thinking, didn't we just move the if else block from one place to another? And yeah, that would be true, if not for one key difference. Instead of one rigid if else, we can now give each component its own reward system. 
and each system stays clean, focused, and easy to read. Here's another huge benefit of using constructor injection. Every dependency is in one place. Imagine joining a long-running project and trying to figure out what each class needs to function. With this approach, all dependencies are listed right in the constructor. No guessing, no searching. Compare that to the typical Unity code base, where you're digging through files and scanning for something that instants just to understand what the hell is going on here. As a bonus, if one of the singletons is missing or not initialized for some reason, you will find out about it only when you run the method that relies on this singleton. For me personally, it's confusing to say the least. With constructor injection, the contract is clear. This class won't work unless you give me these things up front. Now, wiring up dependencies manually, like we just did, it, it works. But once your project starts growing, you'll quickly find yourself building a system just to manage all the other systems. At that point, it makes sense to reach for a proper dependency injection container. Something that can do this wiring for you. There are a few options out there, and like with anything else, they all have their pros and cons. Zenject, or Extenject for example, was the go-to framework for a long time. It's feature-rich, battle-tested, and still heavily used in many companies especially those that started development years ago. The main issue though, it hasn't been actively maintained for the past couple of years. Reflex, on the other hand, is a newer option. It's lightweight, simple, and super performant. It's worth keeping an eye on if you're looking for minimal setup and Unity-first design. And then there's my personal favorite, vContainer. For me, it strikes a nice balance between performance and features, and most importantly, it aligns with how I believe the AI should work. Less magic and more structure. If I had to pick one framework to showcase dependency injection, it would be vContainer. Still, the overall pattern is similar across most frameworks. In vContainer, we define our bindings inside the lifetime scope. That's how we configure what gets injected and how. Here, we bind each implementation to the iReward system interface depending on player's group. Finally, we register it as a singleton, so any class requesting iReward system will get the same instance. And then we register our daily login handler as an entry point. We won't dive into entry points just yet, but let's say it just means vContainer will automatically construct it, inject all of its dependencies, and call one of its lifecycle methods. It's important to note, for a class to receive automatic injection, it must go through the DI container one way or another. Now, let's get back to daily login handler. You'll notice that this class hasn't changed much. It's the same as in the manual wiring example. The only difference is that it now implements iStartable interface, so vContainer knows to call its start method automatically. So far, we've been working with plain C -sharp classes. And that's great! Honestly, I prefer to limit my usage of mono behaviors. But eventually, you'll need to interact with them. And the good news is, vContainer supports that too. Here, we have a mono behavior. It uses the inject attribute on a method called construct. Since mono behaviors don't have constructors, this is where method injection comes in. The method name can be wherever you want. But I suggest sticking to something like construct or any other naming convention, as long as it's consistent across your project. By using the inject attribute, you can inject directly into fields or properties without the need for constructor or method injection. But if you ask me, I'm not a big fan. For me, it's less explicit and makes the dependencies harder to spot. Dependency injection isn't just about wiring up services. Frameworks like vContainer also support scopes, collection resolutions, keyed registrations, factories, and so much more. In the next video, we'll explore some of these techniques with a practical example, but for now, you've seen how DI can help manage complexity, reduce coupling, and keep your architecture flexible as your game grows. So, keep on creating, and I'll see you in the next video.